Good evening, guys. It's Pastor Chris at True Life Way. Hope you've had a great day. Hope you've had a great weekend. I'm not going to beat around the bush. Tonight, I want to talk to you about standing your ground when you find yourself standing before the giant. How many of y'all have had to stand before the giant before? Everybody in this room, I would say, would have their hand up. And everybody at home that's watching, listening, whatever, will have their hand up. Because at some point in our lives, we've all had to stand before the giant. When you're standing there facing your Goliath and you feel like there isn't any other way, I encourage you to stand firm. Take up your sword and take up your shield and prepare to what? Fight. Prepare for battle. If you'll turn in your Bibles today to 1 Samuel 17, all the scriptures, all the verses and scripture we read is going to be coming out of 1 Samuel 17. We are going to be reading a few verses to set the narrative. So starting at uh, 1 Samuel 17, starting at verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shokoth, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shokoth and Azekah in Epsidamon. Don't even know if I'm saying that right. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and sat the, set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. I want you to remember that. They were both perched on a mountain on each side, and then between them was a valley that divided them, the, to the armies. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron. <coughs> and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will will then will we be your servants. But if I kill, if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I, def I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. If you bow your heads, we're going to pray. Lord, we thank you for this night you give us. God, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Lord, we ask that you let this message be a seed planted in someone's life tonight, God that they will know to trust in you, Lord, and that no matter what may stand before them, Lord, that we will triumph through you. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And just in pray to church, say amen. 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 So here we see in this chapter that the Philistines and the men of Israel were both standing on mountains. I want you all to remember that. Remember that? And they were divided by a single valley. Then a champion comes out from the camp of the Philistines, and his name is Goliath. This is he's a beast. He steps out and he's around nine feet tall, wearing brass armor for protection over his head, chest, and legs. This was clearly not someone that you would want to trifle with, right? This man was ready for war, and he challenges Saul and his men to send someone out to face him twice a day for forty days, morning and evening. Goliath, the champion of the Philistines, comes out between the lines. And challenges the Israelites to send out a champion of their own. And though he's there two times in the morning and in the evening. Telling them, send someone out here that was going to fight me. Send somebody. Choose you somebody to fight me. You know, this reminds me a lot of how we act today. Myself included. You see, we sometimes, we have to face our own Goliaths. There are times when things get so tough, we face someone that is head to toe in armor with giant spears that can impale us. <clears throat> and it's human nature for us to be afraid sometimes, to become stricken with grief 
for we do not know the outcome. We don't know what's going to happen. We find ourselves afraid. How many of you like to know exactly what's going to happen next? Be honest. I'm one of those people. I like to know exactly what's about to happen. There's, I want to know how certain scenarios are going to play out. If we do this, then this is going to happen, and so forth and so on. And I realize I'm not going to know everything. I'm not going to know how everything is going to fall into place, how everything's going to happen. But it's human nature causes us to worry, causes us to become afraid, to become doubtful, right? Verse 11, we read that when Saul and all of Israel heard the words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. They were, they were very afraid. They were this uh, Goliath. They, were, they, they didn't like the way he appeared. He looked like this big old bad dude, right? They were scared of him. You ever face somebody that you was absolutely afraid of? Somebody that you just did not want to really mess with? Sometimes it is us being taunted by the Goliath. Here lately, and now we talked about this before we started up here, uh, before we started recording a sermon. I've been struggling with True Life Way. For me, the giant in front of me has been telling me that True Life, Way's, True Life Way is a waste of time. I keep being told that nobody's watching, nobody cares. I want, you to, I want to tell you, though, that we're not going to stop preaching at True Life Way. I know it's been a little bit. It might have gotten off, but we're getting back on because I can't allow the devil to win. I can't not allow it. On Friday, I ordered some uh, microphones for our sound system. It's the one mic that we had to come with it. It suffered an unfortunate fate. So I've ordered three more microphones. So people, I'm looking at Christopher and Carson, they want to help sing. We're going to start singing before the sermons again. We're more than likely going to start, it's going to be a video again instead of just me talking. You're going to be able to see my face. I don't know why you want to see it, but you'll be able to see my face again. But that is a giant I've been facing, and I ask you to pray for, that you'll pray for us, that God will put a hedge protection over us, our mind, body, and soul. Amen? Amen. Verse 16. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. That's where it comes into play. He showed up twice a day for 40 days. When it comes to us, it seems like our giant wants to show up multiple times a day, taunting us, harassing us, making sure that they're able to strike fear into us. Want to know that we will go down in defeat. That's what he's there for, to make sure that he knows we will be defeated. Anyone ever else faced this before? The ones at home know what I'm talking about. Verse 19. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Eli fighting with the Philistines. So they had begun to fight within the valley. And notice the significance here. This is why I was saying... They were divided by a valley. They were both on the mountaintops, on the mountains. Notice the significance here that they did not fight while they were on the mountain, right? They did not fight while they were on the mountain. It was only when they were in the valley that they began to fight. It's like with us, it's easy being on top of the mountains. We've preached that before. There's nothing, you know, mountaintops don't teach you anything, right? It's easy up on the top, top of the mountains. But down in the valleys, hear me now, down in the valleys are where our battles are fought. That's where the lessons are learned. Do you agree with that tonight? That is where we learn, amen? David ran out to the army and saluted them. As he talked with them, the champion Goliath walked up. <coughs> so now he just shows up. And then we read in verse 24 that, And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. They were scared to death when this man shows up. They were absolutely terrified of this giant, this behemoth. He looked like a monster. David decides that he wants to stand and fight the giant. How many of you ever decided in your life that, I'm, hey, I'm tired of running from it. I'm going to fight my problems head on. I'm going to fight the giant. Have you ever done that before? That's what we're doing right now. I don't care who doesn't listen to True Life Way. I don't care who's not watching. Because I've got three people in this room that watches and a grandmother that watches in West Virginia. And that's all I need. Amen. 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 Verse 32. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. 
David says, Saul, let no man's heart fail because of that Goliath. I'm going to go fight with him. I'm going to fight him. But you're just a little shepherd boy. You can't possibly stand up against this Goliath, this behemoth, this monster. <coughs> Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine. This is verse 33, by the way. Against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. You're just a young kid. And this, this man here, from the day he was born, has been nothing but a man of war. You can't fight him. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. Remember, David's a shepherd boy. And I went after, out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David wasn't having it. He says, look, I had a lion and a bear coming to take a lamb from me, and I slew them. I took the lamb out of the mouth. And this Philistine is going to be just like that lion and like that bear. Because he has defied the armies of the who? The living God. You know, how many of y'all know tonight that we serve the living God? This is the living God. Do you, do you, you, you agree with that, Carson? All right. Verse 37. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me... And listen to this tonight, for real. Listen to what he says here. David said, The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear... He will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. So he's saying, The one that delivered me from the bear, the one that delivered me from the lion, is going to be the same one that delivers me from the hand of Goliath. Right? He says he will fight Goliath. But he's told he can't. You know, we just read that. You're young. He's been a fighter since his youth. He's going to destroy you. And you know what? Sometimes I feel like this is how it goes with us in our lives. We are standing before the giant. And we have people around us that we thought would have supported us. We have people that we thought would have encouraged us. But then instead of saying you can do it, they tell us we can't. Saul, in my opinion, was only looking out for David. So I'm not faulting him in this case. But I'm saying in life, you have people that you feel like you could turn to that will support you, but they're not there. And if the people are there, they're not the ones, they're not to encourage you, they're discouraging you. Then David explains to him about the lion and the bear taking the lamb, and he killed them both. He says that this Philistine will be like them, as he has defied the armies of the living God. He continues to say that the Lord that delivered him from the bear and the lion will also deliver him from the hands of the Philistine. Which is who? Goliath. Saul says to go, and the Lord go with you. You see, in this situation, we know that we have the living God fighting on our side. Because we know we already acknowledge today that we serve the, T-H-E, the only living God. He is the only one. We, uh, we have acknowledged that. We know in Him. We, we know that our trust is in Him. That our trust should be in Him. Right? Yeah. That no matter what we face, He will see us through it. That the same one that, that uh, was that delivered Him from the lion and the bear will deliver us. We can use our past experiences and know that we will be delivered again as well. That's what David was saying. Yes, I know that man out there is a beast. He could kill me very quickly. But I also know the God that delivered me from the bear. The God that delivered me from the lion will deliver me from Goliath today. He's using a past experience to know that God will see him through. Amen? 
Mighty quiet. Verse 38, And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. David was girded with armor of brass, and he was given a sword. Right? He, that, he was given that. But David didn't kill Goliath with a sword, did he? Did he, did he kill him with a sword, Carson? No. David, however, was not used to the armor. He was not used to the sword that he was given. So he just didn't use it. Instead, grabbing a staff, a sling, and five stones... And he headed out towards to, to Goliath. David was about to face this giant head on. And it looked like a joke to those around. Puny little boy coming out to face this champion. This killer. We feel like a joke sometimes too when we try to face our giant too. Verse 44. And the Philistine said to David, come to me. Listen to this. Come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air. And to the beast of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with the sword, and with a spear, and with the shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee. And take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Amen? Amen. Come on. Fight me. I will feed the animals with your flesh after I've killed you. Well, David, he wasn't worried about that. He wasn't all about that. But said, you come to me with a spear and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. And today the Lord will deliver me will deliver you into my hand. And it isn't you that's going to kill me, Goliath, but I'm going to be the one that kills you. That's what he told him. David wasn't playing around. He was serious. And he meant business. It's about time for us to quit playing around and get serious and mean, and mean business. Right? And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David that David hastened and he ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone. And he slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead. And he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head with therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion dead, they fled. David stood against Goliath. Yes, Carson. David stood against Goliath. When the Goliath when Goliath ran after after him, the Bible says that David ran the other way. Is that what it said? You shook your head, yeah, Christopher? That's what it said. No. When Goliath came out and ran after him, the Bible says that David hastened, he, he made haste, he went, he was quick, and ran toward the armies of the Philistine. He put a stone in his sling, and it hit Goliath in the forehead, and he fell face first to the ground. He fell face first. David then goes and stands upon him using the sword of Goliath, cuts his head off. Right? Cuts his head off. And in verse 51 says that when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. They got out of town. They wasn't so tough anymore now that the meanest, biggest, baddest in their army was gone. 
the one they had chosen, the, the one that was raised from his youth to be a fighter, was dead. And it wasn't that a sword was cut him. It wasn't, it was a, sl a stone that knocked him to the ground. Right? And then he was decapitated with a sword. There was something about this little shepherd boy. He wasn't dependent on his own might. Right? He wasn't. And you know, and that can be us today. That can be us today. <clears throat> we can stand in victory over our giants if we will fight the good fight of faith. And that reminds me of what we talked about in Sunday school when we were talking about who is Jesus in your life? Is he the king of your life? How many times have you tried to push Jesus away? Right? Do you remember that? We just talked about that this morning in Sunday school. But we have to, that's why David was successful. Because he wasn't relying on him. He wasn't relying on his way, but God's way. Little shepherd boy. If we will stand on the word of God, if we will stand on the truth, if we believe and know that God will bring us through it, he will. But it's within his time, not ours. His way, not our way, right? But it's time for us to get serious. It's time for us to take up our swords and take up our shields. Put on the armor of God. <clears throat> because the devil is roaming to and fro. He is looking for someone to devour. Someone to bring down. Someone to destroy. Someone to discourage. Someone to, for him to make them think that they should just quit. He is putting Goliath in our way to distract. To discourage. But we must fight and we can't quit. And if you're like me, the Lord's brought you too far for you to turn around and go back. Can't stop here. Got to keep moving forward. Got to go, right? Got to keep marching. There's no turning back. No matter how many times Goliath gets in your way, you stand strong. You don't quit. You keep fighting. God will see you through it. God will keep you even when you are standing before the giant. Amen? God will see you through when you are standing before the giant. You know, you see people say, move mountain, move all the time. Move giant, move. They may not just up and move. Sometimes you just have to fight. You have to be determined, I'm going to win this. And then realize you're not on your own. That you have people fighting with you. And more importantly, you have God fighting on your side. Amen? Lord, we're thankful for this night you give us, God. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for us. Lord, we ask that you will let this message be a seed in someone's life tonight, God. And anybody that's under the sound of my voice at this time, God, if they are facing a giant, they're facing a Goliath, and he's been out there two days, two times a day for 40 days, Lord, that we will learn to trust in you, God, to do things your way, just as David did, fighting the, uh, the giant, Lord. And I just ask that you will touch anybody that's under the sound of my voice Anybody that, they, that has a need, what, no matter what it may be, that you will touch it according to your will and your purpose, God. For you are worthy. And we love you today, God. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And Jesus ain't praying. And trust, say amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, look, I know, like I said at the beginning, it's been a while since we've done this, but we're going to pick this back up. We're not stopping. We're not quitting. We're going to keep on preaching. We're going to keep on posting the scripture on here. That doesn't mean that there won't be times that we're going to keep doing our little our home Bible study because we're still going to do that too. We've been uh, doing a uh, book of Revelation. I do plan on having a, a sermon for Christmas that we'll post on there and a, a New Year's sermon because I, I like doing the New Year's and the Christmas sermons a lot. So we will do, definitely be doing those. And uh, if you have any prayer requests, you can send them to us and we'll pray for you. Uh, any, Just anything. If you ever need somebody to talk to, you can get in touch with us at True Life Way. So we love you guys. God bless you. And we will see you on the next one. Take care.